Region 25A. Gaffney Indians, a team that was among the three unbeatens in the area when the night began, but four of their six wins had come by either a possession or in overtime. They were in a tight one in the third quarter against Dorman, trailing 6 0. Javon Gilmore to Junior Smith. Gaffney had a 7 6 lead. Looked like they were going to extend that later in the third. Chaz Smith, though, fumbles into the end zone. Donovan Anderson recovers for Dorman. It's a touchback. Cavaliers get it out of the 20, so they dodge a ball there. Still down 7 6, fourth quarter. Bryce O'Neill on a fourth down play extends the drive. Then Ranson Farr sent out there to kick a field goal gives his team a 9 to 7 lead. But did they leave too much time on the clock? More than three minutes to go for Gilmore in the Gaffney offense. But Dorman's defense, which has been good throughout the year, it's a big reason why they went into the night with a plus two scoring margin. Well, they come up big, they get the stop, they stop Gaffney, and they pick up a huge win against the number two team in 5A in the state. Nine to seven, what a team effort for the Cavaliers. Extremely proud of our guys. You know, we they keep coming every week and they believe in themselves and they keep working every week. Hey, this this team is special. Really proud of this senior class. Bryce O'Neill doing a phenomenal job of their offense. The offensive line took over. Running backs did a great job. You know, I can't say enough about how proud I am of this team. And then our defense is just just better and better every week. I'm so proud of our defense, our defensive staff and the things they've been able to do. Yeah, they got a shutout last week in a win against Wade Hampton. This, of course, was a much different animal, and they were able to shut down Gilmore and a good Gaffney offense as Dorman improves to 5-3, and 3-2 three, three and two in the region. Gaffney falls to 6-1 and 3-1. and, three and one. Now elsewhere, Spartanburg with a win at home could stay in the driver's seat in Region 25A. They would remain unbeaten if they knocked off Burns. Todd Summers has the recap from Viking Stadium. Seventh ranked Spartanburg playing host to rival Burns. The Vikings get the ball first and score first. Trey Burke throws it to the back corner of the end zone and Justin Rice brings it down for a six yard touchdown. Vikings lead seven nothing. Midway through the first, Vikings driving once again. Trey Burke throws high across the middle and Emerson James comes up with the interception and the freshman defensive back finds room to run, returning the pick 64 yards for the Rebels touchdown. Game tied at seven, under five minutes of play in the first. Vikings sophomore running back Trenton Lynch takes the pitch, makes a few Rebels miss, and breaks free from a big hit on his way to a 36-yard touchdown. Spartanburg leads 14-7 after one. Under four minutes to play in the first half, Shrine Bowler Cambridge Smith takes the direct snap, breaks a few tackles, bounces it outside, and goes 27 yards for the touchdown. Spartanburg up 21-7. Less than a minute later, Quincy Haywood picks off the Kane Rogers pass and returns it 22 yards for the score. Vikings lead 28-7. Less than a minute after that, Burns is backed up deep in its own territory. Kane Rogers is hit from behind. The ball comes out, and Vikings defensive back Jarius Mosley scoops it up and returns it to the Rebels' two-yard line. Eight seconds to play first half, third and goal. Trey Burke fires across the middle. Calvin Choice is open in the back of the end zone for the five-yard touchdown. Spartanburg in control, up 35-7 at the break. Under five minutes to play in the third quarter, Trenton Lynch with his second touchdown of the night. He takes the handoff, finds a huge hole, makes a couple of cuts, and takes off 53 yards for the score. Spartanburg up 42-7. Early fourth quarter, Will Love connects on a 54-yard field goal to set a new Vikings record. Spartanburg leads 45-7. Midway through the fourth, Chris Sutton puts this one on ice as he goes straight ahead for the 42-yard touchdown to help Spartanburg roll past Burns 58-14. In Spartanburg, for the High School Red Zone, I'm Todd Summers. So Spartanburg sitting in first by itself with two weeks to go. Boiling Springs ready to get it done tonight at home against Riverside. Ryshawn Morgan had himself a nice game. Dogs trying to make it 9 out of 10 against the Warriors. There's Morgan into the end zone to make it 41 to 6 in the third quarter. How about some more Morgan? He has been a nice weapon to go with Lincoln Husky and others on that offense for Matt Reels Bulldogs. Boiling Springs rolls to a fifth one on the year. They get their record even at two and two in the region, 41 to six. Eastside and Wade Hampton rivals getting together. Generals trying to beat a 5A team for the first time since 2018. Maybe they'd knock off their rival from just down the street. There's a connection, Jamerson McKinney to Will K. And Wade Hampton trying to get on the board. Jaquan Haygood with the rush. Looking to get close to Pater. Peyton Schrader, though, 
and east side had too much for him. The quarterback will tuck and run. That's a 30 yard sprint to the end zone. East side gets a first win in region 2-5-A to get to 1-3 and three and 4-3 and three overall. They roll 34-0 against rival Wade Hampton. Well, the head coaches in the Southside Christian Christ Church game have each won state titles. Their teams were battling tonight. Neither has probably ever looked at the scoreboard and seen that. A 4-0 lead for Christ Church in the second quarter. Crazy stuff. But as the second quarter progresses, Jack Criswell to Jackson Conley makes it 7-4. Sabres on the road. Southside Christian with the lead at the break by that same score. Third quarter, Ford Glenn, big D for Christ Church. It was a game for the defenses. It remained a 7-4 game into the fourth quarter. Tucker Hendricks able to come up with a big run here. It was his touchdown to win it with about a minute to go for Christ Church, which makes it three in a row in the series. 11-7, their score for a while reminiscent of Hillcrest's 6-4 win against Malden a few years ago, but Christ Church gets the win. They're 2-1 in Region 2-3A. St. Joe's trying to stay unbeaten and keep pace with Powdersville. They were at home against Palmetto. Here's Lucas Salgado. Late first quarter with his team already up 21-0. Good hard yards there. William Gillespie part of that backfield for Eric Nash's offense. Cuts back. Early second quarter, Salgado does the honors. 28 zip at that point, St. Joe's in the first meeting against Palmetto. It's the Knights coming away with a victory over the Mustangs, 35-14. Powdersville after an 0-3 start going for a fifth straight win and looking for a seventh straight as they took on Carolina and they were looking good. Keegan Reed on the connection with Joe Sean Knuckles for a 35-0 lead for Powdersville. Jordan Rice and Myson Smith get together for Carolina, but it's not enough as Powdersville rolls on. So they and St. Joe's both 3-0 in Region 2-3A with a showdown upcoming. Belton Honeypath trying to stay in the driver's seat in Region 1-3A. Battling Pendleton on the road. Battle of Anderson County teams. Tajay Watson Martin sees daylight. He is heading to the house. Speed that rivals his teammate Quez Henderson. Eli Satterfield later. Able to work off the face and get to the end zone for the score. Speaking of Henderson, 171 yards in the night. Here's one of his two touchdowns. He is now. Up around 5,800 in his career in his quest to get to 6,000. Henderson and the Bears make it 14-0 all-time against Pendleton with a 48-7 win. West Oak and Wahala in Region 1-3A. The Hogs trying to get to 2-0 in region play and extend an eight-game winning streak against the Warriors. Tristan Woodland with the extra effort. West Oak fumbling the ball near the end zone. Wahala, Clay Laura able to pick it up. He'd return it 90 yards for a touchdown. Crazy stuff. And the Razorbacks get a fifth win on the year with a 62-0 victory.